In this video, we're going to take a look at how you can create and manage invoices in your account as well as collect payments on those invoices. There are three places in your account where you can manage invoices. First of all, inside of each event, there's an invoices tool and um, you can add invoices and manage the invoices for each event in there. Um, you can also, inside of each proposal, you can turn a proposal automatically into an invoice by clicking on the Create Invoice button up there at the top of the proposal. That will just pull all the line items from the, in, from the proposal into a new invoice, saving you lots of time. You can also manage all of your invoices, of course, here in the Invoices area in the main navigation bar. You can use the search feature to search for um, certain words or dates for an invoice. Um, you can also um, use the stat circles here to view um, invoices by week, month, or year. Um, click on the view button and it'll show you all the relevant invoices pertaining to that stat. You can also look at invoices uh, for balances due, total payments, and payment reminders. And you can again sort those by time range. The show all just returns you back to the main screen and you can use the up down arrows for the columns here to sort those alphabetically or chronologically based on the column. To create an invoice from um, this screen, just click on the add invoice to start an invoice from scratch. Um, here you can select a lead that's already um, a, a contact in your account or you can add a new contact, which I'm gonna do right here. Um, once you've added that contact, the system automatically um, uh, numbers the invoices for you. You can add an invoice name here, the invoice date, uh, the due date for the invoice, which is when the final amount for that invoice is due, and a PO number if you have one. Here's the information I just added. And now, since we're not in an event, we can link this to an event if we wish by clicking on that button and then finding our event in the list and then clicking on save. And now this is associated with that event and I can show you where that is in a little bit. The next thing you can do um, is you can track deposits for, um, for a particular event right here. Um, and a deposit is not a payment, it's just basically money that is you are holding for a certain reason, say for a reservation or maybe a breakage deposit. Um, once you've added it here, you can take an action like edit it or delete it you can also apply a deposit towards an amount owed, which turns part of the part or all of the deposit into a payment. And you can um, designate if the deposit has been refunded right there. And you can track all that right here inside of an invoice. To add a line item to the invoice, just click on add line item. And here you can um, add a name, the date, the quantity, unit cost, and a markup or a discount rates. We're gonna mark it up. And in the sales tax rate, you can either set a custom rate for this particular line item, or you can choose from one of the preset rates inside of your account. And I can show you where to do that in the settings area. And you can also um, create a description for your line items right here. And you can use the formatting tools at the top um, to um, format your descriptions, like put bullets or make it bold or a towel or whatever. If you want to add another one, click save and add another. Otherwise, just click save and close. Here is our new line item. Um, and if you click on the actions button, you can edit it, delete it, or you can add a thumbnail image. Um, and this image will display here inside of the invoice. It will also display on all of the PDFs for this particular invoice. And here is that thumbnail image right here. You can also, I'm gonna, we're gonna go up to the import export button right here. Um, you can do several things here. First of all, you can import line item templates as new line items, which I'll show you how to do in a minute. Um, there's a time entry tool inside of your events. You can also import time entries as new line items. And if you've created a line item here that you'd like to use again, you can save it as a template. So we're gonna go to the templates area. We're gonna go to the proposal and invoice line item templates area. And here I've already built out a bunch of line item templates that I can pull into proposals and invoices over and over again. And to create one, it's just like creating a line item in an invoice itself. So I'm gonna go back to that import export button inside of our invoice we've been working on. And I'm gonna import um, several of the line item templates like a plated meal, beverage service, I'm gonna import some rental line items and maybe a uh, event architecture line item. And once I've saved those, all of those line items will be added to my invoice, as you can see right here. 
Um, and that saves you a ton of time also if you add the same line items over and over again to an invoice. And once you've added them, you can edit them. So I'm just gonna change the quantity for this particular one. And once I save it, all those changes will be made. Well, now we have a lot of line items, so let's try and arrange them into categories. Um, you can use the categories tool to make your invoices nice and neat. Um, I've already added some category topics to my account and I can show you where to manage those. Um, so I'm gonna pick out a couple categories, but you can create a new category on the fly right there if you want to. Um, once I click on save, those categories will have been added. Um, they are empty, so now let's start um, pulling some of those line items I've already built into those areas. So I'm gonna click on the actions button. Um, you can select change category to move one line item into a category like I did there. Or um, you can use these handy check boxes to not only uh, move items, multiple items into a category, but you can um, do other things with these check boxes. In bulk, say I can add a markup or discount to multiple items that way, or I can um, add or change the tax rate to multiple items that, that way. Um, however, in this case, I'm going to add these two to my food and beverage category. And so once you've created a category, you can see at the bottom of the category, it's gonna give you subtotals. And um, let's say we want to add an additional fee to a category. Additional fees um, are things like service charges, gratuity, delivery and shipping, and setup. So I'm gonna add a, a gratuity to this particular item. Um, the additional fees are either a fixed fee or a percentage of the total, and this will be a percentage of the total of the uh, category. Um, you can include line item tax amounts and markup discounts when calculating the fee. And you can also um, add a tax rate to a additional fee. And you can use these settings as the default. And I can show you in a little bit where you can manage the default settings for those additional fees. You can also add an additional fee to the entire invoice total, not just a category. So I'm gonna add a service charge to this particular invoice total. And uh, again, I'm gonna make this a percentage of the total. I'm just gonna change the percentage of amount here. And if I live in a state where I have to ch tax the uh, service fee, I can do that right there. And then you can always edit the service fee in the actions button. Now we're going to take a look um, at how you can move around items. You can just use the up and down arrow to move um, your line items inside of a category. Um, the show hide button right here lets you show or hide certain columns or data both on screen as well as in the PDFs that are downloaded for this particular invoice. And so I'm gonna show those, but I'm gonna hide them inside of the PDF. And this right here, if you use um, one of our credit card processors, um, you can use this to pass the merchant fees along to your client when they um, fill in the information to uh, uh, pay the invoice by credit card. And I can show you how that's done in a minute. You can add a message to your invoice right here. Uh, and most of the time, this is just sort of a thank you for your business type of message, but you can add whatever message you wish. You can also add images to the image gallery for an invoice, say maybe um, you want to attach um, bill through um, receipts from vendors or something like that, you can do it that way. Um, or you can attach um, pictures from the events that uh, you have provided to somebody and you can add titles and captions to these images also. You can also attach files to um, an invoice. And again, you can use this, say, if maybe you have bill through invoices that you want to attach or receipts you want to attach, you can do that right here. Um, finally, you can tag an invoice um, and tags are used if you want to um, uh, search invoices for particular tags or run reports for invoices based on particular tags. And there are tags we added right there. Now we're going to take a look at um, the event that we added this to. I'm gonna show you where that appears inside of the event. So we're going to scroll down to the event to which we added that invoice. And then if I go to the invoices tool inside of that event, here is the invoice that we've been working on. And you can access it from also inside of the event as well as the main invoices section. 
I'm now going to go to the settings area and show you where you can manage some of those preset settings. For example, the tax rates. Here is where you can manage the tax rates that you can attribute to line items. Here is where you can um, set the display settings, the default display settings for on-screen and PDFs for your proposals and invoices. Here is where you can manage the line item category um, labels. And here is where you can manage the uh, settings and, and amounts for the additional fees that you assess to both categories and totals of invoices and proposals. Now we're going to go to the templates area and I'm going to show you how you can set up an invoice template that you can use over and over again. And setting up an invoice template is much like just setting up an invoice. You can add line items, you can add categories, um, you can add additional fees. Um, pretty much anything you can do in an invoice, you can build in an invoice template. And then once you've built it out here, you can then go to um, the invoices area. And instead of starting an invoice from scratch, you can just click on the import export button and import it as a template. You can also save an invoice you've already built as a template to save yourself some time. We're going to import an invoice, the invoice we were just looking at, the sales training event invoice template as a new invoice. And so Boom, here it is. Here are all the line items and categories and additional fees and messages and image gallery. Um, and then you can go in here and edit, delete, and modify as needed. We're gonna go back to our original invoice we've been working on and um, we're gonna email that to the client. So we're gonna click on the email button. Um, you can modify the subject line here um, as well as you can modify the body copy. Um, it's automatically gonna select your client, but you can um, email it to additional uh, uh, contacts. Um, the pay now button lets you add um, a uh, payment button for that particular invoice to pay by credit card. And of course, um, the invoice and any attachments are also attached to that email. I'm gonna show you what that email looks like. Here is what was sent out to the client. Um, and here is the PDF of the invoice that is attached to that email. This is what it would look like. And inside of that email is a button for making a payment online. And if you are uh, have an account with one of our preferred credit card providers, you'll, you're able to um, use this um, to collect credit card payments from your customers on your invoices that you send out. You can also set up payment reminders. Um, and this is typically for people who um, say uh, have uh, installments for their invoices. Again, you can add a pay now button to the invoice or to the payment reminder um, to have the person pay by credit card. Um, we do let you um, quick fill in um, certain percentages of the invoice total. You can add the payment due date and when the email will be sent out for this reminder. And you can create as many uh, payment reminders as you wish for a particular invoice. Um, and basically it's as many installments as you have. And so you can save and add another, or you can just simply save and close, which we're gonna do. And the system will tell you if the invoice has been, or if the uh, email reminder has been sent out or not. You can manually add payments right here. Um, the manually add payment link um, will let you basically add a payment that say you collected by maybe cash or check or outside of the planning pod uh, account. Uh, you can add an amount and a reference number here or a check number. And once you've added that, at the top it will show you um, that the payments have been subtracted from the total of the invoice showing the balance due. Um, and this will also display in the very bottom of the invoice too, right here where it shows the payment. You can always edit or delete it. Um, and again, it will be subtracted from the invoice total. And you can also add payments down here, manual payments down there too. The other thing you can do in the add payment area is you can open up um, a credit card uh, uh, field where you can manually say um, the client is right there in front of you so you, it's card in hand or you're talking to them on the phone, you can actually process um, a credit card payment manually by doing that. At the top here, you can also download a uh, invoice PDF on the fly just by clicking on invoice PDF and it's going to um, uh, 
basically be the same PDF that gets emailed to the client. Um, here's what, again, what that would look like. And if any payments are made, those will also appear inside of the invoice. However, um, you can also download a sales receipt PDF to provide your clients if you just need to show them um, what's been paid. And this will not only um, provide payments, but it'll also provide any deposit history and uh, what has happened with deposits for that particular invoice. And now we're going to take a look in the settings area where you can set up credit card processing on your account. It is right here. If you click on that link, um, it will take you to the page where um, WePay is our preferred credit card processor. If you click on the Confirm Now button, it will finalize set up with WePay so that you can start accepting credit card payments um, using WePay and in conjunction with the Planning Pod system. That's how you can use Planning Pod to um, track all your invoices and payments, but do let us know if you have additional questions.